The box is open for you to work. Uh, we'll have a few opening comments and then go to uh, Q&A. Remember, we've got the remote mics that we'll get to you if you raise your hand. And also the basketball, which starts tonight. Uh, credentials we have for a lot of you will be available after we finish everything in here. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Paul. Um, yep, we opened our start our work on Mississippi State today. Uh, took a, a day of the bye week to work towards these guys. Very different, really different two ways. Different defensively. Uh, the defense coordinator does an incredible job. Uh, different kind of scheme than we faced before. Uh, and then offensively, obviously, they're very different. Um, and people would probably think they're similar to Tennessee, but they're really not similar to Tennessee. So it would be kind of the third week of facing a different kind of offense uh, in terms of what they do offensively. And very, very few of our, our calls and schemes carry over uh, from one week to the next when you play this offense. So it's a new challenge for our guys. And you know, our guys will be excited about getting ready for it. It's an extremely tough place to play, a place I've been many times. Uh, their environment is electric. It'll be at night. And uh, their guys play really hard, and they're really physical. Uh, we, we saw that. A couple years ago, here at home against them. Yes, it was the year. So. <coughs> Kirby, you mentioned that game a few years ago here in Athens. What is different about this Mississippi State offense from that game to this one that you've seen on film? Well, a lot more experienced quarterback. You know, that was the, the kickoff for him. And uh, he played really well in that game and um, kind of got a lot of confidence, uh, you know, playing against us. And he's, he's, I don't know how many games he's played since then, but a lot. He's broken a lot of records. Uh, he's very intelligent. He doesn't make mistakes. He <clears throat> he uses Coach Lucas's offense um, to his strength, and they understand very similar to last week. Triple options. They know who they are. They have answers for what they do. They're usually one step ahead of their answers than you are because you don't play against it but once a year, and they do it all the time. So uh, they have exposure to to everything. Every defense has tried on them, and um, you know their, their quarterback is very experienced. And that's the biggest difference. Defensively, they may not be the same players they were because a lot of those guys are gone. They are extremely physical, disruptive. Um, defense coordinator does a, a great job. Uh, Zach Arn does a great job with it. Uh, Kirby, you talked before. You only get better things by doing them. You guys have done this number one thing a lot. I know you don't often obviously pay attention to it, but you also know the players see it. Is that a, kind of another muscle, like that composure muscle you talked about earlier this week that your team has learned to be able to flex over the years of have being in this position to block that out? We just don't talk about it much. I mean, they understand it's not it's wasted energy when you talk about it and you guys want to write about it and do all that. I, I, you just focus on Mississippi State and like, what do we have to do to play well against them? What do we have to do to play well on the road in the SEC? We'll, we'll, those are the focuses. That that's nothing but a number and a distraction, and it's irrelevant. It just doesn't really matter. So I don't. You know, they see it, but they don't, they don't get it discussed around here. Because I think the more you talk about it, the more attention you bring to it. Kirby, talking about Mississippi State's offense, they're averaging like right under forty nine attempts per game. Uh, just uh, what is the mindset got to be, especially of the players in your secondary, knowing that they're going to come out and throw it as much as they do. Well, you'd be mistaken if you think they're just throwing it because they've got some really good backs and they're really physical up front and they space you out. You know, there's more gaps um, in the run game. Um, they really gash some people uh, running the ball this year. And I think that's the biggest difference is they, they, they are committed to running the ball and being physical up front. And people have the wrong demeanor when they go to play this team that, oh, man, I'm going to go out here and pass rush and get all these sacks. They're not going to let you do that. You know, number one, they pass pro really well. Number two, they, 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 they run scheme really well. And uh, they got good backs. So it's not going to be a deal where it's just all about secondary. The secondary's got to play well every week. Coach, you think that's an update on Robert Beal? Yeah, uh, Robert had a stinger um, and feels good. Hopefully we'll see. I mean, I haven't seen him today. But feel good about him being able to play. Uh, I guess other injuries, AD, uh, Truss, and Mims. How are any updates on those guys? Yeah, the update is we're hopeful to get each one of them back this week. Curry, you got a lot of second year guys on defense who are obviously starters contributing a lot. How much happens from the true freshman year to your second year that? in development and how much of it is 
still relying on a pure talent agency. When we recruit based on talent and instinct and you know character and things like that, but you develop everybody that comes here. So when they come, they become part of the development. We teach our scheme, we teach our scheme in the spring, we teach it in the summer, we teach it again in fall camp, and then we teach it throughout the season. Uh, and the more you teach, and the more you expand someone's brain, the more information they can handle. And we try to push the limits of the expansion so that they can hold more and they can uh, they can do more. Um, and it doesn't matter where they come from, when they get here, what age they are, what their rating was. We just take the guys that choose to be a part of it and we try to develop them. Um, and whether you're first year, second year, third year, fourth year, you can get better. I mean, NFL scouts come, they want to see a player get developed. They want to see him improve. They don't say, well, your juniors are all good. They're, they're ready to go. No, there's a lot of things they can get better at. There's just more things that our first year, second year guys can get better at. And we try to practice in a way where the young players get a lot of reps so they're ready when their turn comes. How do you go about creating a both physically and mentally tough team, especially in day and age where players do have more freedom and can possibly enter the transfer portal if they don't like what they see here? Yeah, we hit mentally tough and physically tough. We hit a lot, so they they, they, they get that they get that speech before they come because I don't want to lie to them. So tell them we're going to be in pads Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and uh, we're going to be physical and we're going. to practice physical, we're going to be physical in the spring, we're going to be comfortable being physical. So that's agreed upon when they come. Coach, uh, how, how much did Jalen Carter actually end up playing in, in the game, you know, total, total snaps wise? And, and the, the, uh, his impact on the game, uh, just what, what, what did it bring to the game? And lastly, the was that a, uh, I'm sure you've looked at it several times since then. I have too. It looked like that was a safety. I don't know what they saw there. And if that, that, how bothered were you about that particular call? Does it matter? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not. a little worried about Mississippi State, to be honest. Jalen question, it's, uh, I don't know how many snaps he played. I didn't, I didn't check it. We count them. We do production. We have how many points he made. He certainly was productive in terms of tackles, calls, fumbles. Uh, he was, he was the first time this year, and I, I wouldn't even say that 100% help. I would say first time this year he was above 90, uh, 95, because on the very first play of the game against Oregon, he took a, a tough ankle injury and has not really been 100% since. And he's committed to getting back, and he's worked really hard. So I don't know how many snaps he played. Uh, he didn't play perfect, and he needs to get in better shape to be able to play more snaps. But he has taken ownership and working on that. That was the big thing for him coming into the season is how good a shape can you be in to play a larger volume of snaps? Well, we've had this great fortune of getting a lot of dudes ready around him because he hasn't been there. Um, so it's like a, a luxury to have him back and have him playing well. Um, he still has a few things he's got to work on in terms of playing the right way within the plan. But um, he's he played really well the other day, and, and we need him to continue that. Yeah, Kirby, what are some things your defense can take moving forward for the big C game in terms of bills when you're talking about the other buying into the plan and the big explosive plays, that kind of stuff? Well, you can maybe get some confidence from it, but uh, it, just, it doesn't carry over. You know, like like there's nobody who will play uh, these next three games in the regular season that are that's really like that. It's just when you watch the tape, it's different. It's very different. Uh, yeah, Kirby. Two things. One, uh, Kendall Milton reemerged. How important was it to add that depth to the backfield? And then two, before moving on completely from that last game, we hear so much about hurry up offense. Can you comment more about your hurry up defense? Because I don't believe there was ever an issue with your substitution or them catching you in the wrong personnel. I might have missed that. Yeah, um, Kendall Milton has worked his tail off. Uh, he practiced much better last week, although I, I wouldn't say he was 100% last week. Practice much better. He got better as the week went along. He felt more comfortable uh, going into the game. We felt like he was going to be able to help us if we needed him to. Um, and we, we, you know, Dejan was a little dinged up. King was a little dinged up during the game. So it gave us an opportunity to, to play Kendall. He stepped up and, uh, and did a nice job. So I'm hoping that Kendall can get back to 100%.
this week because we need him and the others um, for the stretch run. So as far as the, the hurry up stuff, I mean, everybody has a way of practicing for it and there's no perfect way. So you can do the best you can with it. It's hard to simulate. How do you evaluate uh, Devin Love stepping in as a starter and then with Warren Erickson um, keeping him engaged Yeah, Warren does a great job preparing each week. He's a guy that can play all the way across the board, all five positions. He's uh, very versatile. He's very experienced. Um, he's a leader in that group. He, he commands respect of the men in the room because of the playing time he's done and really the way he works. Um, you know, he, he has an extremely valuable role on our team starting on punt because he makes a lot of calls for our punt team, and he does a tremendous job of that and, and his versatility. But uh, Devin thought did a good job. I, I, I challenged Devin to play with more confidence He's got to play confident, play like a starter, and you know he, he really gets good movement on people. And his size allows him to do things. Um, he can recognize some things probably a little quicker. Um, but he, you could tell he came out with a demeanor of playing physical, and I thought that was that's probably what he does best is, is play physical. You kind of be on the other foot this week, you know, because you know, you're loud when your office is on the field. But, but having gone through the team experience, you know, last Saturday, how much can that help as a whole? Well, it's a huge competitive advantage. It's why there's a home and away, and it's why I always say in the SEC it's greater than NFL other than the playoffs <coughs> because the environment is not the same in any conference division level of football as it is in the SEC when you play on the road. I've been in this conference for 20 something years and it, it, I've seen it. I know what it does in terms of uh, the effect it has on pass rush, the effect it has on momentum. Um, and it's something you really can't measure. So you have to prepare the right way. And it's, it's a firm reason why I believe in practicing crowd noise throughout the year because both sides of the ball need it. Yeah, I was also going to ask you further about the, about the uh, environment there for your time at, at Alabama being there. Um, what makes it unique? Loud. I mean, they, they, they're, they're passionate. You know, I mean, it's. I can't say that it's unique because every SEC school I feel is that way. I mean, you guys were there at Missouri. It was loud, as passionate there. I do think there's a there's a, a feeling in Starkville because it's a rural community that, that, that everybody comes from afar and everybody's sold out and in love with their football team. That's what they have to hang their hat on, their pride in. Usually indicative of all SEC schools, but especially there, I know, you know, being in Tuscaloosa for those years and driving down the road, uh, there's a lot of pride and, and they, they're really physical. Kirby, whether it was Robert Beal or just the defense overall, how do you feel like the guys stepped up with uh, Nolan Smith being out and how do you feel about that moving forward? Yeah, the guys, a lot of guys seized an opportunity. Um, you know, probably inspired and motivated some guys uh, and, and, and others fired with an opportunity to play against a, a, a good team, um, play at home. But I feel good about our guys stepping up. We, we, we certainly need Robert to be healthy because otherwise we're going to be really thin at that position. Uh, but, you know, the other guys are growing and getting better. Coach, I think earlier in the season uh, you said that Dejon Edwards was the one back that was consistently breaking tackles, but it seems like the past couple weeks Kenny McIntosh has been able to win one-on-one -on -one matchups in open space. Uh, how have you seen him develop as a runner? Do you think his confidence has gotten a boost as a result of that? Yeah, I think Kenny always uh, does a great job as a runner. He, he had some elusive runs last week. He breaks tackles downfield. Uh, he had a lot of those against Florida. I mean, he's, he's run the ball really well this year. And uh, sometimes it's not there, and he makes the most of it. And sometimes it is there, and he makes more of it. Uh, and I'm pleased with all those guys' performances. You mentioned Mississippi State's defense. Just what sort of stands out about how they attack on defense? Well, uh, they're aggressive, uh, relentless, they're experienced. They got like seven or eight starters back, disruptive with the way they move and do things. Look, it's known across the league among the coaches that that, that defense is uh, its probably more unique. There's a lot of uh, similar defenses, I guess, across our league. Maybe the coaching trees have come from a lot of the same places. This is different and it stands out. And you better have a good plan because they can take what you do away from you quick.
you mentioned this a little bit uh, Saturday night. Uh, I thought you said something like it maybe you uh, took the air out of it a little bit more than you would have liked to in retrospect the way that game ended this past Saturday. Uh, was that more of, well, let me not put words, let me ask you straight out. Did you feel like uh, you guys finished the game that you, the way you wanted it? Did you take finished? the air out of it? Yes. But yeah. did I question doing that? No. Not based on the circumstances. Right. Uh, I don't, I don't, I certainly didn't intentionally question that because I think that was the, the play in that moment because the conditions changed. Uh, and you got to be smart when you're coaching. It could be wind, it could be rain, it could be anything. It could be an injury. But you got to be smart when you see two exchanges with two guys, their backs never, hardly ever do they fumble. Um, and our backs very rarely do too. But when you see two things happen back to back, talking about Branson's and theirs, Changes the way you think about it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Kirby, I, I, I guess I just ask you about Mike Leach. I mean, he's he's considered one of the offensive mind legends, etc. What what is it about Coach Leach? And you've gotten to kind of know him probably better than most behind the scenes. He seems a bit eccentric. Is <laughs> does he like that uh, behind the curtain as well? And uh, just kind of your thoughts on his offenses and and who and what he is. Yeah, I enjoy uh, being around him. I, I don't know him that well, probably as well as I know some others, because he was out west for uh, a large time I've been coaching here. But he was at Valdosta State when I was in high school. And uh, his staff recruited me to go to Valdosta State from right down the road. So I knew he was there at that time. And I um, know a lot about him uh, and followed his career because of Coach Hatcher and because of the Air Raid kind of family. But i uh, got a lot of respect for what he does. Easy ball too. He's not stayed exactly the same. You know, their 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 backs and their commitment to the to the run has been, you know, different than the so-called just air raid. Um, and he's brought that physicality really to the SEC in terms of what he does. Kirby, you mentioned about the, the weather in the second half. I think we've already mentioned the fumble, I guess. But is there anything else when you guys are watching film and you look at the number of fumbles you have that uh, you want to emphasize this player? All security. Really important. You guys, last week, it was such an emotional game, number one team, and, all, and all, everything that went into it. How do you battle against the letdown or and keep the same standard you know, that you guys are used to? Well, you do that by, no matter who you play, you have a process and you have, we're not going to go do anything different, different today than we did when we played Vandy, Auburn, Kent State, Missouri, or anybody else. Because when you treat it different, you make it different. So that's not what this program is built on. We, we, we do it week to week, and we worry about the opponent that week. And it's not what you want me to say, and not what you want me to do <laughs> right, but it's true. Coach, you spoke a little bit about Javon Bode after the game the other day. But after looking back at the game film, anything else about the performance that jumped out at you? Uh, played really hard, tackled well, um, physical. Loves. He's passionate about playing the game. I mean, he didn't play perfect. Now he, he grabbed and held a couple times and got cold. And uh, but he, he played hard. He, he understood the game plan and he uh, he executed. It. Let's take two more questions. Yeah, when Robert went out, we see him taking the snaps for both Chaz and, and Chaz played a lot in the game regardless. And then Marvin Jones as well. How did you assess how those guys did, especially being young players being thrust into bigger roles on Saturday? The best news is they got to practice a lot going into it because of the, the rep, uh, the loss of reps and Nolan kind of got dispersed them out among those guys. So they were better prepared because they were one notch uh, up. So they, they were a little more prepared for it. Still didn't play perfect. Jalen got to get in and get some snaps. Jalen Walker plays um, some. He's kind of an in-between hybrid guy that can play third down rush, but he can also play inside backer. So Jalen got a little piece. Uh, Marvin got to play and then Chaz did a nice job. The key is keeping those guys healthy. Coach, I believe you said uh, maybe after the game, whenever that uh, maybe some of your guys were kind of battling through the flu last week. Uh, how is everybody kind of from that standpoint right now? Yeah, we've got the Warren Brits. A couple guys have been battling the flu, went into the game uh, that way, and uh, a couple have tried to push through. Uh, a couple walk on guys that were out. Um, but you know, we had two or three going into the game that we were worried about. They seemed to come out right. I haven't seen them today, but I'm sure they'll be fine. 